Hi all, Lee Veras here with Phototech Tuesday. Each week I'll be posting a new video about photography, technology, art, and everything in between. Today I'm going to look at mastering one of Lightroom's most powerful and most misunderstood masking features, Intersect Mask. We'll examine this specific masking feature with some architectural photos and see how to use masks to creatively alter the tones and contrast of black and white images. Just remember, all of these techniques can work with color images as well. All right, let's get started. So here, uh, here in Lightroom, I've got uh, three images. We're going to start with this first one over here on the left. And uh, pretty straightforward. This is very common. The sky is very bright and the building is, is in full shade. So it's, this is just straight out of camera what it looks like trying to expose to, to leave some information in the sky. Uh, and of course, this suggests that we can open up the shadows and maybe reduce the highlights, effectively reducing the contrast so that we have more information in the highlights and more information in the shadows. Uh, typical thing I do here, uh, clarity all, always looks good on this kind of subject that has some texture. Uh, and maybe a little bit of texture just to enhance the sharpness of those bricks. Uh, but now, you know, if I wanted to use dehaze, which I always love to use for the clouds, well, it makes everything too dark, right? So um, I'm not going to use dehaze here. I'm going to use it uh, in, the, in the sky. Well, maybe just a little bit of dehaze just to get us something up there. Um, and now I got to treat the image separately. So I have to treat the sky separately from the foreground. So let's, let's go to our mask panel here and uh, let's, let's work on the sky. We'll, we'll uh, click on the sky button there and generate a mask for the sky. Now this is where it gets interesting because what I'd like to do is I'd like to create kind of a gradation where it gets darker at the top and, and stays light at the bottom. Uh, so anything I do here in, in the sky will darken the whole thing. And I want to create a gradation from the top. So what I'm going to do, this is, this is a really powerful feature and it's, I haven't seen it demoed very well on YouTube or anywhere else for that matter. Uh, I think a lot of people don't really understand what this is for. So when we go over here to the three little dots, we get sort of mask options and there's normal things like invert, duplicate and invert. And then there's this mysterious intersect mask with, and we get to select a bunch of different types of masks. So I'm going to select linear gradient. So what intersect mask actually does is it uses one mask to constrain the action of another. So in this case, we're using the sky mask, which is isolating the whole sky to constrain the action of a linear gradient. So when I move into the image now and I drag from the top, I'm going to define my gradient here. So, and if I want that gradient to be level, I'll hold down the shift key and I can bring this all the way down past these spires to create a, a very natural kind of gradient, which is going to leave the uncolored areas here are going to stay the way they are. And the top, I'm going to darken. So we'll darken this down. Maybe we'll add even more uh, dehaze, which is kind of puts some more structure in that upper clouds, it makes it more dramatic. OK, now, now I want to create a mask for the building. So I have to add a new mask up here. So I'm going to click and select. Um, we can select subject. It'll, it'll identify the building as a subject. So we'll click that. There's my subject. It, somehow it's missed this portion here. Um, so just for the sake of finishing out this mask, I'm going to click on the mask to thumbnail here which will reveal my add and subtract buttons. So I'm going to add, and I'll just do very simple, add a brush. And we'll make that brush bigger using the bracket keys. And I'm just going to fill in that area because I want this whole building to be selected. 
Okay, so now I'm back here with my mask and I've got all these sliders I can play around with. So let's go ahead and move that white slider because I want to increase the contrast and elevate the brightest thing in the image, which seems to be this covering over this window here. Um, and that's going to keep as much contrast as I can tolerate in here. And now we'll open up the exposure a little bit, maybe add some more clarity, which will also increase the contrast. Okay. And perhaps now we'll go back and add some blacks back in. Some of these dark areas, I want to be a little bit darker. So that also will increase the, the contrast. Okay, let's take a look at that. There you go. All right, let's get our, our second uh, example here. Go into the develop module. Uh, here is straight out of camera. It's kind of flat. Um, so, you know, usually the first thing I think of with this type of subject is that clarity slider. Let's crank that up. That's starting to look pretty good. Um, and, you know, maybe uh, a little texture. Uh, Dehaze will also add contrast, but I'm I'm kind of still feeling like this round building is isn't round or doesn't look round enough. So I'm, I'm again thinking of treating the building separately from the sky, and we're going to use our intersect mask. So let's go into our mask panel, and uh, we'll go ahead and and select the subject, which is the building. Okay, we're going to do an intersect mask here. This is this is kind of interesting. Um, so we need to intersect the mask with a linear gradient. Let me show you what I'm going to do. So I'm going to draw the gradient in from this side, and I want to sort of angle the sh the sort of red shadow so that it it falls into the center uh, of the building here. And I'm going to just darken this down quite a bit. And add some real drama into this image. Now, I'd like to do the same thing from the other side, but with intersect mask, we can only intersect one mask at a time. So I have to create another uh, select subject and another intersect mask with linear gradient. We're going to come from this side now. So again, I'm just trying to create the shadow or this red shadow to kind of match the, the, the feeling of roundness here because I'm going to darken that edge down a little bit. And I can always come back and edit these masks. So I've got this other mask here. Let's make that a little bit darker. Now I got some nice drama in this this building, but I want to I want to emphasize the separation between the dark part of this building and and the sky. So we're going to create another mask for the sky. So we're going to select the sky, and I'm going to intersect this mask with a radial gradient. Okay, so this is kind of interesting. We're a radial radial gradient. And I'm going to draw from sort of the center of the highlight of this building. And you'll, you'll see what's going to happen. So I'm going to drag this gradient out. And you'll start to see that red halo glow. Right? Now I'm going to let go. And I want to edit this gradient some more. So as you see, if I hover over the thumbnail, I can see... That's what the gradient looks like. I want to change the shape of it a bit. So I'm going to widen it out here. And I'm going to rotate it. So if I move outside of the, the gradient, just outside of it, you'll see you get the little kind of curly Q lines that indicate that I can rotate this. So I'm going to rotate it to sort of match that curvature of that building. I'm going to bring this over like this. And now we're going to add some brightness to that sky right in that area. Okay. 
and I'm going to move this over just a little bit. So that's the area that I want to have that brightness uh, be behind the dark part of the building. And I'd like this little this little line here. I want to be able to pop that. So I'm going to zoom in a little bit there. Uh, now I could get a brush and very carefully brush across that, or we can add another mask here and I will use the object uh, selection brush. So I click on objects there and now I can kind of just highlight that. I don't have to be that careful as long as I don't paint over anything but that little highlight line should be able to isolate so you're not see how the mask was recalculated and it trimmed right in there and this is where i'm going to just brighten that up maybe add a little more brightness like that all right let's fit this to the screen all right so you can kind of see now i've really dramatized that quite a bit go back and uh, let's look at our history here. So this is right at the beginning. And now we're back to where we finished. Kind of cool. OK, one last one. This is the most complicated one. So we've got a lot of interesting shapes here. Um, I'd like to darken that sky. You know, maybe we can open up the shadows just a little bit add a little clarity which always helps adds that contrast um, a little little bit of texture a little bit of dehaze put some structure in the clouds uh, and i can't go too far because i really what i'm ultimately want to do is is brighten up this area and i'm going to add that gradient effect into the sky again so let's go ahead and uh Here's a, I made a mask just earlier, just so that we didn't have to wait for me to paint that all out for you. Uh, but we're, let's start with, a, with another mask. We're going to go to um, select the sky. So we'll select the sky. And it does a pretty good job. It puts a little interesting. It's picked up this highlight in the building. I don't mind that because I'm going to intersect this mask with a linear gradient to get the idea that I do this a lot for skies. So we're going to start darkening the sky up there and I'm going to bring it down uh, right to about there because I want to preserve um, this sort of gradient effect in the in the background without going over the buildings. Okay so there we go. That's looking pretty cool. Very dramatic. And now I want to brighten this area up. And I'm going to use another uh, intersect mask. So I have to go back to this mask and I'm going to click on that. Now this mask was a combination of using the object mask tool and the brush to, to final, fin finish the edit on it. But I'm going to go ahead and intersect this mask. It's been edited, but I'm going to intersect it. I only have one intersection I can use. I'm going to use a linear gradient. And I'm going to gradate from here down like this. And we're going to we're going to amp up the whites. Now I got that area there is pretty much clipping. It's very close to clipping. I can see in under the histogram my my numbers there. So um, let's increase the exposure just a little bit because I really want that area to be bright. And now that area is totally clipped to 100. That's all fine. I want that whiteness there. Maybe we can add a little more sort of local contrast into the shape by using the clarity. There we go. And now one last thing. We'll, we'll put a an overall post crop vignetting on this just to get increase the drama even more. So there you can see 
a very dramatic rendering of this, really highlighting this is a part of the Oculus uh, in New York, which is um, um, kind of a shopping mall, very close to the site of the Twin Towers. There's a uh, museum and a monument there, but um, this is a very interesting geometric building in New York, and I've I've highlighted and isolated the part of most interest here. So let's take a look at our, uh, go back to our original here, and, right, and then our final uber dramatic. Well, that's it for now. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, and hopefully this has provided some inspiration for your own work. And perhaps you'll start investigating Intersect Mask on your own. If you like this video, please give us a thumbs up, hit that subscribe button, and ring the bell so you don't miss another Phototech Tuesday. And I will see you next time. Bye for now.